Welcome back, everybody, to the Glorious Sunrise Podcast. This is going to be part two of the episode that we started last week, that we intended to finish last week, and then actually just didn't. And so <laughs> here we are. Uh, John, how you doing, buddy? Doing good, man. I've been looking forward to this one. <laughs> I have too, actually. I really have. Yeah. Um, this is our first two-parter, I think, out of... Yeah. Our, uh, our little podcast series. Um, but if you did miss last week, first and foremost, I do encourage you go check that out. It kind of sets the stage, obviously, for what we're talking about today. Last week was uh, obviously in regards to the upcoming rotation in September. Uh, some of the cards that we were hoping or, or happy to see leave the, the standard environment. And so we each kind of picked five. Uh, now this is going to be the reverse of that, so we're going to be uh, talking about our top five cards that we're not happy to see go, uh, that we yep. wish would be sticking around. Uh, and I have to say, I'm more excited for this episode than I was last the the other list, if that makes sense. I know we thought we were going to do this um, in one episode though, so it I can't say the previous episode, just the other list. <laughs> yeah, I. <laughs> Yeah, I think so. I think I think I agree with that. I'm probably more excited just to give our favorites that are yeah. going away that we're going to miss. But I think last week's was easier to pick. Yeah, it was definitely easier to pick. There were a lot of cards I've I've been salty about. Oh man, in this yeah. Environment. So like for me, it was definitely like a easier list to create. Uh, oh, this yeah. one, there are a lot of cards though that I'm actually pretty sad to see go, and I think for more interesting <laughs> reasons than this card took over the format and I was annoyed by it. So I'm happy to see it go. You know what I mean? Like these are the yeah. cards that we've, we've got personal attachment to for oh, whatever yeah. given reason. So the rune crab thing, man. Yeah. So the I rune had people comment really. on it in the stream. They're like, so we listen to the podcast, man. <laughs> your hate, your hate <laughs> so for listen. mill. Your yeah. hate for mill is real. Yeah. <laughs> like I told you guys, man. We're, but no, we're a little yeah, opposite in that regard. <laughs> oh man. I, oh. I love mill. It's my now they bring now they bring Mill on stream just to piss me off, but good. It's all good fun. Well done. It resolves community. Go piss John <laughs> yeah. off some more. I'd appreciate yeah. it. No, It'd make me happy. dude. If I play five mil decks on, on next yeah. week, man, I'm gonna be so upset. <laughs> I'm gonna be so happy. Um, yeah, we. <laughs> Anyway, we were talking before this about how salty we get at like comments and annoying people and all that stuff. So that oh okay. yeah, bro. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, all that to say, we're gonna be jumping into that <laughs> list today. <laughs> uh, the list of do, cards that we don't want to see leave. Yeah, <laughs> Not basically. The list of things that we. Hate. Yeah, exactly. That's another episode. That's part three. Um, there you so, go. guys, I will just say before we jump into this list because we did mention that it with the uh, the previous one, but I think we did it at the end. If you've got cards that you are sad to see leaving the standard environment, please feel free to share it with us. Uh, we genuinely, I mean, I I do mean this. I think this is kind of the fun part of of being on the uh, content creation end of things. If you guys comment below, it starts that conversation. It lets us all kind of talk about some of the cards that maybe we missed on the list that you're really ex uh, really sad to see leave, whatever it might be, comment those kinds of things down below, and that way we can kind of have a group discussion on it and talk about the goods, the bads, you know, all that kind of stuff. We'd, we'd love to have that conversation with you guys, so uh, please feel free to do that. But, I mean, truthfully, there's not a whole lot else to, to intro with. We can just go ahead and jump into the list if you want to, John. Yeah, sure. Um. Cool. Want you me want to go, go first? first? Yeah. Want me to kick it off? Yeah, we'll we'll do back and forth. <laughs> All right. So look, uh, first one I'm gonna go like reverse. Yeah. Yep. Uh, first one, man. Look, I will not cast this thing as a land. I will die before I cast this thing as a land. This hits my greedy side. Seagate restoration. Man. Oh man. Yeah. I love Seagate restoration, bro. Uh, it's such a I, good card. Yeah, being a control player, man, uh, there's nothing more delightful than having a shit, shit ton of cards in your hand. <laughs> Seriously, man, it's yeah. like it's like hitting Jedi level. It's like I have the power. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, bro, I it's love great, that you man. just said that. Um, <laughs> that's so serious, stupid. dude. I'm serious, man. That's that's the that's the that's the trigger high I get off of it. It's just like, Oh shit, it's over, bro. I got it. <laughs> yeah, no, I get you, dude. There's something so nice about casting that for, and it, it, my thing is it doesn't even have to be for that many cards, right? It's mm -mm. just, give me like, give me like three cards and I'm pretty happy. 
and like all of a sudden now you have no maximum hand size you can do all, basically whatever you want like it just feels good and as a control player i mean i know how much of a control player you are man that's like yeah, the bread bro. and butter man that makes you yeah. feel so good <laughs> oh yeah man if i cast the, you said just for three cards and stuff and you're correct but man yeah. have you, if you ever cast it and hit six cards off that thing or seven oh. cards off that thing and now you've got 12 or 14 and yes. you're on arena and you can't even read anything you should pay for that type of pleasure <laughs> <laughs> it's delightful wow well, we just did a that was interesting um yeah no no i'm with it's you though. Great, well, bro. and what's even better is you cast one one seagate and then you you draw a second one because normally you don't run too many in the deck but every mm. once in a while if you run two and then you get the second one and then the next turn you get to cast the second one you're basically yeah. just like all right well good luck <laughs> yeah man. it feels yeah. so good my greed has limits so i only run one most of the time uh, no i mean you <laughs> no. i think that's the right call most of the time for sure but but i got uh, ways of getting it back in the deck you know i, you do, I usually always play you. Oh yeah, man. I usually <laughs> always play like devious cover up or something like that yeah. and yeah, make yeah. sure that it cycles back in. For sure. No, I'm with you. Oh, it's yeah. a great card. That was a good pick. I didn't even think I love about it, the, man. Uh, the I love it. There. That's a, such a good one. Um, mine's a little bit, my, my number five is a little bit not underwhelming. Uh, but I think just kind of, it's just a, an interesting it, prosperous innkeeper is the pick. Uh, here's my thing. Prosperous Innkeeper on its own isn't, like, amazing. And I, I'm not much of a green player in general, so, like, for me to pick a green card... Actually, it's not the only green card on the list. Um, it's, it's a little odd, but it kind of made me want to play green because it did everything you wanted on turn two. It gave mm -hmm. you that little life buff throughout the game if it stuck on the field. It gave you the treasure token you could ramp. Like, it just felt good to play Prosperous Innkeeper, no matter what. Like, even if they killed it right away, you at least get the little treasure token. It's just a nice little little happy guy. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, I don't know. I, I really am going to miss that card. It's kind of a silly one, but it enabled so much. And I, I think a lot of what I enjoy about magic is kind of the enabling piece of it, because you start to... Obviously, that with some other cards that we'll talk about later, because <laughs> they are on my list... Uh, <laughs> In tandem with other cards in the format, I mean, you could you could do quite a bit uh, off of that card, and so it was a it was a phenomenal little piece, and I am gonna miss him. Yeah. So I, now, from what you're saying, I can I can see the writing on the wall. We yeah. picked the same card somewhere. So I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna think of I'm gonna think of another card. But yeah, man, look, I mean, he's a halfling, but they should have just called that a hobbit. But. Um, <laughs> yeah man he does some stuff he does yeah. he does stuff that just uh the the uh etb effect of other mm -hmm. creatures coming in and gaining the life and it you know one life here one life there starts adding up and it can yeah. uh, draw out the game especially if you're a mid-range deck that takes over from there and it can dirtle out some of the uh like white weenies and stuff like that and uh yeah man well and i think card, the, the flexibility of prosperous innkeeper because i think you know, we will again, we'll talk about some of the, the combo y aspects of this later, but mm -hmm. <laughs> obviously, there are cards that can put Prosperous Innkeeper in a class of like how this is really going to keep you in the game long term. It's actually a potential game winning aspect of the, of the card. Uh, but there's also decks that just run it as like a little value piece, and like, yeah, you might gain, you know, four or five life throughout the game if it sticks. Um, but like, it's not necessarily, it doesn't have to be a broken card. It can just be a, a little bit of a value engine. And so for that reason, it slots into so many different decks. And I think that's what makes it so fun is the flexibility of it all. Um, it's just, it's just a happy little guy. I love him. Yeah, happy, happy guy, happy, happy, happy guy. No, <laughs> it really is, bro. I mean, yeah. there's two drop and drop of the treasures, helping with a little bit of ramp and stuff. It's yeah. definitely, it's something you wanted in place to help you go wide yeah. uh, or, you know, just gas to yeah. your, to well, your and, uh, jump slot. And it's not just ramp. I mean, it's temporary ramp, but it's also uh, color fixing, right? Because it is a treasure yeah. token. And so it's it's actually helping in a lot of different ways. And that's why I mentioned the flexibility of it, because if you are in a multicolor strategy, which a lot of decks are right now for good reason, um, Prosperous Innkeeper actually helped you kind of smooth out your mana, not just in the ramp aspect, but also the coloring aspect. If you needed to get double black for something or whatever it might be, you know, you've got that possibility quite easily. 
Um, so yeah, all that to say, just super flexible card. I love it. Hate to see him go. Yeah. Yeah. No, he's great, bro. He's yeah. great. He is. But we we still kind of we got Gala Greeters. It's not the same. Right. But Gala Greeters gives you a lot of options too. Yes. With the uh I mean the treasure comes in tapped. You get the plus one plus one counters on it to kind of grow. You get the uh um gain the two life, life gain. option. Mm -hmm. And especially with tokens like with Jenny Fay Bay. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, man. Uh, it's it's kind of the same thing, but at the same time, it's not. Yeah, you know? I'm I'm with you 100. Um, percent I think I'm glad it gives we you have more options, but yeah, I don't it's... know that I like it as much as Prosperous Innkeeper. I think because of the line of text on Gallag Readers that says you can only choose each one once each turn, mm -hmm. uh, the ceiling potential is a little bit less like uh, the yeah. powerhouse and the flexibility side is obviously much higher because you can do multiple different things per turn you know it's it's a little bit better in that regard but uh because prosperous innkeeper doesn't have a limitation on the amount of life you can gain per turn yep you you can do you broken open shit. up a lot more stuff <laughs> yeah yeah um but we'll all talk that about say, that yeah exactly that'll be later <laughs> yeah no doubt. So in number four, if you're ready to jump over, yeah. I've got, uh, I know you're going to love this one. <laughs> oh, no. It's a twofer. Uh, Doom Scar and Blood on the Snow, man. Oh. As a control player, of course. as a control player, I like sweepers. And Doom Scar was an amazing sweeper. Oh, yeah. And then Blood on Snow was just equally as good. It was higher cost, but you could recur your planeswalkers and your creatures and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But uh, having the sweepers, man, I don't know that we're going to spend too much time on this because I, <laughs> I can hear the uh in your voice. <laughs> but but uh, no. yeah, as a control player, man, the sweepers are definitely something you have to take into consideration and have within the deck. And Doomscar was a quick one mm -hmm. to help you uh, level out like Boros Aggro and, and Mono White and uh, even Mono Green back in the day and stuff yeah. like that. And then Stumpy. Blood on the Snow, depending on what your build is. I mean, Blood on the Snow is the whole reason. Uh, well, not the whole reason, but a really big reason that you can play a good Mono Black control deck right now where it is with the uh, creature package and and like Invoke Despairs and stuff like that. You can't get Invoke Despairs back with Blood on the Snow, but you are building back up to your Loth or, right. you know, you're bringing back in your Shakedown Heavies or whatever you've got going on in the package. So yeah, I'm going to miss them, man. No, you know, okay, because I put Blood on the Snow, for those of you who didn't watch, <laughs> uh, I did put Blood on the Snow on my list of cards I'm very happy to see leave. I did not actually put Doomscar for a couple different reasons. It was that was actually one of my more like I would for for me personally a bit more of an internal struggle pick because I love mono black control and I think Blood on the Snow obviously is a phenomenal piece for that deck. I think it's as you mentioned part of the reason mm -hmm. that deck is so good. Um, I think Doomscar is also as you mentioned a, a super efficient sweeper. We haven't seen an an efficient sweeper on that level since like Bantu's Last Reckoning and Hour of Devastation, which had such a drastic downside that it was like not really worth it. Um, and but I think actually Blood on the Snow, I'm happier to see go than Doomscar, and the reason being, um, it's it's the mana cost. So Doomscar being such an efficient sweeper, as in you can mm -hmm. foretell it and then play it on three, is really annoying when you're against it, right? Like, obviously, if you're playing a creature deck and they Doomscar turn three, like, it sucks. However, what's really important to note about that is you haven't had time as the creature deck to overcommit to the board. And I think no. that's part of the reason why Doomscar didn't quite bother me as much is because generally it was played on turn three, maybe turn four, depending on, you know, what the board state was at the time. And then as the creature deck, you you kind of had a time, like a turn or two after that, to maybe try and piece something together uh, because you hadn't overcommitted your hand to the board quite yet. Uh, and especially if you were an experienced player, like you kind of knew not to do that, if that makes sense, because you yeah. know what was going on. Um, whereas Blood on the Snow, like by turn six, if you're a creature aggro deck, like you, <laughs> you, your hand's out there, like you're pretty it's much done. going. You're top decking, like it's done. And what's so frustrating about that is not only do they take away all of your momentum by using blood on the snow and blowing up all your creatures, but because it wasn't good enough, 
they're like, <laughs> by the way, here's a loss to now deal with. You know, it's like, what the fuck, man? <laughs> like, you already sweat. Yeah. That's enough. Um, so, yeah. Well, and I mean, look, to anybody listening to this before it rotates out, one of my favorite things to do right now, talk about rebuilding the board state. I run uh, Body Launder and Junji in the same package with yeah. it now. Yeah. In a in a in a mid range mono black control deck list, man, the freaking blood on the snow, the board with the Junji and a body launderer on the field. <laughs> <laughs> You're bringing body launderer and something else back, and, yeah. And if you or you know, and if you've got enough snow lands, you're bringing Junji back, so yeah. you completely rebuild. Yeah. And you've just taken I mean, it's out amazing, everything yeah. on the other side of the board. So, I, Funny I, I like where mono black is right now. You mentioned Body Launder, and I won't mm -hmm. harp on this because it's not in relation to the sweepers, but uh, there is a deck that was submitted to us uh, by Cole Simmons, who is one of our community members. We've been a longtime supporter yeah. of the channel, so I don't mean ca I don't mind calling him out. Um, yeah. He submitted a, uh, a deck that I hope, <laughs> if I have time today, <laughs> will be up yesterday in terms of when this video goes out. I know that's confusing. Basically, on Sunday, hopefully his deck went up. Um, and it's a uh, party reanimator list. And I did yeah. one test game so far. And it does have body launder in it. And it does have a couple of other recursive pieces. And I accidentally found like a recursive engine that was just constantly like they killed something, I bring it back. They killed something, I bring it back. And I didn't really have to do anything. It just happened. And I'm like, all right, sick. This is awesome. Yeah. So, Cole, thank you for the submission, uh, is the long story short there. I'm really stoked to uh, see how that goes. But, um, yeah, I haven't fly. recorded it yet, so I'm I'm hoping we can get it on recording. Sorry, I'm over here with my hand turret. I got a fly corner. <laughs> I don't know where it came from, <laughs> but no, yeah, I know Cole. Cole's Cole, Cole's Cole awesome. comes in, uh, hangs out on the stream every now and then too. Yeah. So yeah, I man, I got to tell you too. I mean, not to deviate too much, but they're loving this, dude. You uh, you play in their deck list and stuff like that. I've so, noticed. Yeah, I like. They're playing. having a I blast mean, with it, man. I'll, I'll be honest, and I'm not going to say names, I'm not going to say anything. Some of the decks that get submitted are a little challenging because I feel bad. It's not that I think <laughs> the decks are bad, it's just because we play on the ladder and we face yeah. a particular subset of decks, Like sometimes it's a little bit challenging to get a deck to work. And in those scenarios, I don't always record the video if I just think, okay, this... Like, no offense to the people, but they obviously, like, aren't playing on the ladder with that deck because it never wins, you know what I mean? And I feel yeah. bad sometimes because I'm like, I want to play your deck. Like, don't get me wrong. And I don't mind losing on camera. We've proven that fact. I've lost <laughs> a million times. Um, I, there was one weekend, man. I recorded, like, three or four videos in a row, and I lost all of it. And I was like, man, fuck yeah. this. Um, but I cheat and, you know, go undefeated all the time, too, so... It's fine. Yeah, uh, <laughs> man, you are you cheating ass. Bro. I cheat. <laughs> so, I right. love when people comment that because uh, I get so salty. Um, but all right, so back to it. What's your <laughs> what's your fourth spot? Dude? My fourth spot. <laughs> Here we go. Uh, this is a fun one. I'm. I actually am really we had a really sad, folks. We yeah, had a we button. did. Let it, I get let's pissed off because let's get him in dumbass that. people. <laughs> anyway, um, it's all on camera. <laughs> I don't care. I have, I'm fortunate. We have an amazing community who is extraordinarily supportive. If a dumbass wants to come in here and say, hey, you cheated, recorded 10 games. Fuck, I don't have the time for that. Are you kidding me? I work oh full time. God, bro. Anyway. Oh my God, man. Ugh. How to trigger Kevin record. 101. He, he, he does. Oh, bro. I love it, man. Tell me. I know how to push these buttons. Yeah, he does. But he does record. He does I record, record right straight through. I, the only thing I cut out is the in between games because there's no point in seeing that. I'm not talking during it. So that's just frustrating to me. Anyway, my fourth pick. <laughs> <laughs> so good. Uh, the Prismatic Bridge, which is also a sequel, yeah. but truthfully, yeah. it's just the Prismatic Bridge. Um, good one. It's such a fun card, man. I love free stuff. And yeah. the Prismatic Bridge is such a great little en just enabler for so many silly things to happen. And as you'll probably notice with most of mine, I like silly stuff. Uh, and mm -hmm. so while Prosperous Innkeeper was a bit of a like obvious, you know, kind of standard pick, I think Prismatic Bridge is one of those that you either loved it or you hated it. You may not have played with it very often. Uh, or maybe you tried it once, you had fun with it, but it wasn't competitive enough, so you don't play it very often. <laughs> 
Um, <laughs> what are you laughing at? Anyway. My mind went, Psh, oh, your okay. words, bro. <laughs> your words. I word good. I'm good at yeah, word. Um, it was good, man. Anybody listening to this on the radio right now is like really happy that it segued yeah. straight back to Prismatic Bridge. <laughs> What is happening in this episode? Anyway, I do love the prismatic bridge. I'm sad to see it go. End of story. That's my fourth. No, man. I love it, dude. I love it. It doesn't have to be in the story. No, man. It does broken shit. It does. Yeah. And uh, just, just to even uh, just to acknowledge uh, Friday night stream. I know this is going out on Monday, but Friday night stream. Um, I had a game against a regular that's he's there all the time, man. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and he had that game locked, but I had, I had <laughs> Prismatic <laughs> Bridge in hand. And I'm just sitting here thinking to myself, well, I'm just going to throw stuff out and throw stuff out until yeah. I can get to turn five and turn five happened, man. And I threw that thing down, dude, I still won the game. She yes. just started flo flowing straight happens, out of the man. deck it's list, great. bro. It it's went crazy. Phenomenal. I love it. It went busted crazy, man. It yeah. was like Titan, yeah. Titan. <laughs> so, yeah. so, well, so. and especially now with so many, I mean, you bring up Titan of Industry with like so many big powerhouse cards right now mm -hmm. that are in, in the format. Like, I mean, it's a, it's a pretty silly card if you can get it going. I think obviously that's the trick with the Prismatic Bridge deck, especially on the ladder. You're going to be up against yeah. the Boros aggro decks that are just going to like eat you alive. You know what I mean? But oh, yeah. Um, yeah, if you get it to work once, it's worth the five games it takes to get there uh, is kind of my view. And so I don't know. It's just fun. I love it. Yep. No, it's a great card, man. It's a yeah. great card. It was a lot of fun, especially if you like to brew and do broken shit. And, yeah. yeah. And I don't know why my camera's focus is just doing all kinds of weird crap today. But... It's okay. I like put my hand up. I'm doing it right now. If it, yeah, it'll focus on my hand and then I get blurry too. My autofocus kind of caught up pretty quickly. So that's good. There we'll we go. Mine didn't. I had to reset. There you go, guys super professional now you podcast. can see his beautiful face <laughs> so so yeah man i love prismatic bridge dude i yeah. love anything that does some stupid shit so yeah 100%. yeah it's great and it had a great moment man it did have great runs oh, yeah. it has it does it, it gives you that little high in arena or magic in general that you're looking for just bringing stuff in for free man that's when i that's when i play the most optimal just yeah. when I'm not playing my own deck. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, That's why I play everybody else. No, I'm just <laughs> no. All right. The deck number just three. plays for me. Yeah. Number honestly. three. Uh, number three. This one's going to be kind of an off the wall one, but I use her a lot. <laughs> God. Uh, Professor <laughs> Onyx. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> um. <laughs> Professor I don't Onyx. Know why. This is I don't so know, stupid. bro. This um, just was so bad. Uh, have... Professor, <laughs> what? <laughs> hey, you know how we've been sidebar. Everybody watching, ignore this. Uh, you know how we've been talking about shorts. Yeah. This should be a short. Just, just so <laughs> right. we're clear. The, the timestamp is twenty three twenty four. All right. Yeah. Anyway, moving on. I Professor use it Onyx. A lot. I use it a lot, bro. <laughs> so, um, yeah, man. Look, she fit really well, kind of with my play style, being the control player. And uh, my favorite deck is my Esper control deck, and anybody that knows me knows that deck list. And it's just a hate machine of what some commenters will say does does nothing, but it wins. So um, she, uh, you know, the mage craft ability off of her with the instance and the sorcery is pinging your opponent for two, you gaining two life and then being able to draw and her ultimate's amazing. And, uh, you can get her to, you know, uh, have your opponent sack a creature. She was just a really good, uh, planeswalker to utilize throughout different deck lists. And, uh, she's, yeah. she saved my butt a lot, but I have a constant comment about her, her plus ability you know you get to look at the top three of your library you pick one you put one at the graveyard she's normally really good to me but we're still in therapy because there's times she'll just give me three lands so yeah oh. gonna miss her gonna miss her yeah i mean i i'll be honest i didn't play much with professor onyx mostly because <laughs> <laughs> what is so funny I don't know, bro. It's my whole, 
We just got the giggles today. Yeah, dude, um, it's fun, bro. I, uh, but every time I did, I was just gonna say, every time I did play Professor Onyx, I actually really enjoyed playing the <laughs> decks they ran her. Fuck off, man. What is this? <laughs> you muted because you were laughing too I hard. I did, dude. I did. I had to, anyway, bro. I had uh, to. No, yeah, but yeah, she's she is amazing, ridiculous. bro. She's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> this is such a Shit. dumb episode. Whoo! All right, my yep. three. We're moving on from John's fuckery. Uh, all right. Uh, it's my I, my mind's childish right now. I know. Just let it go, man. Not right it's now. Not it just gonna, is. Yeah, look, I'm almost fifty. It's never gonna change. It's just sip, be sip your grape Kool Aid and I'm sip going the fuck to, down. Man, I got <laughs> <it>. <laughs> Um, my number three pick is Eldrazi Monument, um, which is like obviously only good in particular strategies, uh, in particular colorless strategies. It obviously doesn't really do anything in any other kind of strategy, but every time I played it, it's just such a fun card to, to build around. Um, Swayze, I'm going to call out Swayze, did a phenomenal job building some colorless decks. I know I played, I believe the mono black version. And I know I tested the mono blue version that he talked about. I don't remember if I put a video out on it or not. Uh, but Swayze did a really good job building a deck around that. While I don't think you, it was you're anywhere. talking, you're talking about Forsaken Monument. Did I say Eldrazi Monument? Yeah, yes. you did, Excuse bro. Excuse me, you Forsaken <laughs> Monument. Fucked me up. I was like, that shit's in standard. Yeah, dude. <laughs> I play in Commander, but I didn't know it was in standard. No, Pardon but me. yeah. Yes, Forsaken, Forsaken Monument. Monument. Holy God. Good, good catch. I totally fucked my up. My mind melted, dude. Yeah, I funny. had to grab my phone. I was uh, like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, Forsaken Monument. Such a sick mm. card uh works amazingly well in those kinds of decks and it does everything you need it to in the deck which is obviously power up your board ramp you and gain you life back which i think in that kind of deck in a standard environment is so important because there are so many decks that try and beat you like really really quickly down uh and so normally if you can drop that and then just play one or two things you start cl clawing your way back into it and it's difficult to deal with your board because you've got obviously a powered up board uh, and so I don't know that that was just a really fun one for me. I played it every once in a while, and every time I did, I really enjoyed it. Um, mm. Definitely more of a build around card than, uh, in particular, like Prosperous Innkeeper was. But in the same kind of vein that um, that the Prismatic Bridge was, which is it's a it's a pretty straightforward build, right? Like you kind of have to build around that core. Uh, and yep. I love cards like that. I think they're really, really fun. I've talked about how Mirror March used to be one of my favorite cards just because it was stupid. Uh, yep. And, you know, it was kind of in that vein. Right on. Yeah, look, I hate the card. <laughs> I hate the card, man. No, I really, look, Swayze, <laughs> I've seen Swayze use it, and shout yeah. out to Swayze on it. Um, and he's absolutely busted that card. Yeah. Um, I've seen some of his gameplay where he just did some of the stupidest stuff with that thing. And uh, I mean, thank God for the video, because then I knew that that was something I had to get rid of if it hit the board. And uh, I've seen you use it as well. But uh, man, I OK, so look, here's the thing. I've played it and I like it. It's fine. But I played it the first time I played it, man. I did the trigger wrong. And it just pissed me off, dude. I just hated the card <laughs> ever what? since. I just I hated the card ever since, bro. I was That's on I you, was man. Of, That's not yeah, on the card. It really is, dude. I'm in therapy for it. But look. I mean, You're in therapy it's, it's a what, lot because of magic. Yeah, oh, <laughs> That's not for good. everything, bro. Oh my god! If you only knew half the battle. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, no, no, I'm really not in therapy. Maybe that's the issue, but no, man, the card. I mean, it's a good card. It really is, yeah. it, and it can. But you're right; it has to be built around. Yeah. And um, I like making decks that have one, two, three optional win cons, and if yeah, you build around fair. that one, um, it's it it gets i i mean the decks that i've played it gets pretty tight yeah. building right around that so Definitely. your optionals kind of peter out a little bit compared to other deck lists yeah. but no it's a good card man it's just it's a fun good one. to me um, yeah but yeah you yep. did it we made it through one without laughing too hard all right number two kind of <laughs> kind, kind of, of on john's okay list. is your number two my number two or is i think your, so. is your number one my number one 
my number two is uh a little, that little card. green buddy oh okay all right so yeah we're both doing number two right now all right sick all right both of our number twos <laughs> <laughs> scoot swarm yes man what a delightful Ooh. little guy dude if you like we're brewing up stupid shit this dude is the dude for you yeah <laughs> he absolutely was 100 percent, man and uh probably back before we merged um he was he she whatever it, it. um was um the star of probably one of my biggest video releases because I did a Golgari multiplier deck. You used it in yep. one of your episodes. And uh, then uh, you got Dina that every time you gain life, you drain life and it had Prosperous Innkeeper and it had Skeletal Swarming. And then you go wide and it had Rin to get more lands. And if you go wide enough, you could finish out with Meat Hook, man. Or you could just machine gun him to death with life gain off of Prosperous Innkeeper and Dina doing the life drain. It was just a lot of fun, man. There's so yeah. many options with them. And then you start throwing in Glorious Sunrise with it and you mm -hmm. can get the plus one, plus ones and tramples. And I mean, yeah, dude, it just got stupid, man. I've done yeah. so much broken shit with Scoot Swarm, man. I don't, I, I don't know what my next Scoot Swarm is going to be. Yeah. I, but uh, I was obsessed a while, man. I had to quit building decks with Scoot Swarm because I, he was popping up in everything. I felt the exact same way. I was playing with him a little too often because I was finding that there were so many different ways you could <laughs> utilize the tokens. Shut up. I know what you're thinking. No, 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 no. I'm, no. I'm serious. I'm absolutely, I agree. I thought 100%. you were. <laughs> he, no, no, no. My mind didn't go that way. No, it really was though, man. He's yeah. just stupid. He's yeah. so stupid. Oh, absolutely stupid. I honestly think the most annoying thing that, uh, the most annoying update to Magic Arena was in limiting tokens on mm -hmm. the battlefield to like 256 or whatever it is because it made it less fun to break scoot swarm and i'm yeah. like man fuck you guys for taking away <laughs> um but it was and yeah that i mean scoot swarm is an absolute powerhouse card it's obviously you know if you play it early it's one of those cards that the opponent feels they have to remove it before you can get to that sixth land you know what i mean Mm -hmm. uh, and if you do get it down on, you know, turn six and then you drop a land or what, you know, whatever combination you start getting extras, it's just like, all right, I mean, you got, you got to sweep. Otherwise you are done. Like there's no way around it. Um, and yeah. so it's, it's just a, a really phenomenal card. And with things like meat hook massacre in the format, it was so easy to just win off of it without even having oh, yeah. to attack. Um, oh yeah. Just a the machine gun kill, man. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think before it goes out, I'm going to have to do a video for the channel and I will cheat. You'll only get my wins on it because this thing's not going on the ladder to be viable. Uh, I have to do the Demogordon, um, Tend the Pest, Scoot Swarm, the new lands that gain a life when it comes in, Dina, Prosperous. It's going to have about a six-piece combo <laughs> and, then splendid, and then Splendid Reclamation. But that devilish valet off a of fight rigging comes so in, good. Splendid yeah. Reclamation with Scoot Swarm, and then Tend the Pest on, on just a really big-ass creature and just go through. I mean, I've gotten an over 2 million hit with yeah. Devilish Valet. Yeah. Um, yeah, you can do some stupid shit there. But yeah. I haven't done Scoot Swarm Devilish Valley yet, and they're kind of built together. They definitely are. Um, so yeah, I got to. I, I kind of want to do a little like a little tribute to Scoot Swarm somehow yeah. before before it rotates out. Part of me just wants to go super like meta and stupid and do like a literal like obituary for Scoot Swarm, like <laughs> record a not gameplay, just like a in loving memory of you know <laughs> and like. But it's, uh, yeah, it's so that was my number two. Also, obviously. yeah, right. <laughs> we'll um, <do> so. <laughs> uh, anyway, number we'll do one, some boys to men. Some boys <laughs> right. to men. Wow. Yep. Gotta uh, do some boys to men for the music in the background. So yeah, my number one. Look, man, and this one's gonna be super unexpected, but it is my favorite combo-ish thing in the game. Oh. And it's helped me stabilize a lot. Uh, it helps you get to a wider meat hook. It helps you get to a blood on the snow faster. It draws you some cards. It ramps you. Shambling oh. gas and deadly dispute. 
I'm gonna wow. miss. I'm gonna miss <laughs> shambling gas with deadly dispute. Deadly dispute stays, but yeah. shambling gas. Not having shambling gas and deadly dispute, dude. It's it's a hor- man. Look, it can sound really mediocre, but that's a powerful matchup together, man. It's they're crazy. So here's my thing. You're exactly right. Mm-hmm. I, I'm not gonna contest that. I'm just kind of excited to see a black deck not start with a shambling gas <laughs> right off the bat because I'm kind of just tired of it. I mean, yeah. No. No, but it's like I the same, it. you know, it. it's just the first few turns kind of play themselves out because it's always the same start. And like, mm-hmm. that's for a reason. Obviously, it's good. It's very powerful. So it totally makes sense. I get it. Um, yep. But it's just like, yeah. Like, can we not? No, like, I know what you're doing. Like, I know, can... dude. Well, hey, look, you picked blood on the snow last week. I'm allowed. But, yeah, no, <laughs> seriously. It just, it's one of those, it's kind of like Scoose War, man. I had to find a way to get away from it, and I never yeah. could. Because there is no better start than turn one, shambling gas. Turn two, deadly dispute, shambling yeah. gas. And turn three, you're ready to drop a loss. I mean, you're right. Turn three, lost. Totally Turn right. three, Junji. Um, or I can meet hook for three. Or I'm one more play away from my blood on the snow. And um, to stabilize against some of these <laughs> aggro decks that are going on, um, that's the only thing that, I mean, really, that just kept it viable. But, man, yeah. it's hard for me to build, uh, put put swamps in anything and not put this combo in i almost yeah. have to and it's a, yeah i've got more of a, an obsession with uh shambling gas deadly dispute than i do scoot swarm so i'm you. gonna miss the old shambling gas bro <laughs> i'll miss playing it because it, it really does feel good to play so i get where you're coming from i just um yeah i don't know it, it was just one of those where it's like okay well if you're running black yeah. here's the first few turns you've got it scheduled out like <laughs> no I for agree. good we reason were talking, we were talking about it last night i was that was something that was brought up when we were yeah. talking about it i was like man this mono black deck that i've got i was like man it's just and then stokes played mono black too mm-hmm. against me and i'm just like man mono black's is such a great spot and then i was like now, what the hell takes the spot of shambling gas when dominaria comes out yeah so we gotta wait and see yeah we'll wait and see um this is also a good time since you mentioned dominaria to mention mm-hmm. uh that as this video goes out is this coming out on the first yes as yeah. this video comes out the new patreon rewards will be available through the month of august uh the only reason i bring that up is because john mentioned dominaria we're doing a little ode to the previous Dominaria set. If you didn't check that out, you can look at our website at resolvesmcg.com and see all that info, or just go straight to our Patreon. Uh, the new yeah. pack is all Dominaria cards. It's uh, Teferi Hero of Dominaria. We've got Karn in there. We've got Mox Amber, and then we have Muldrotha, uh, all of which are featuring a player's reward frame. So mm-hmm. like that old school full art player's reward frame, we utilize that for those proxies. And I'm really stoked at it because I thought it was really sick. So all that nice. to say, uh, it, that, that's my little self-promotion for, for the episode. Um, my pick for number one. <laughs> Segway. Yeah, right? That was super solid. Um, yeah, man. Valky slash Tibalt. Yep. <laughs> That's so, great card. such a fucking good card, guys. Here's my They're thing. Still great, man. They finally Carl's made Tibalt good. Carl's gonna be good. so happy. <laughs> yeah. Shout yeah. out, Carl. Shout out, Carl. <laughs> um, dude, I everything about that card was exactly what I wanted to do in a game. Like, if I played it on the Valky side, I get to steal something from the opponent, which I'm a fan of, and then, <laughs> and then beat face with it later on in the game. So I'm like, hey, haha, I'm gonna beat you with your own creature. Fuck you. You know, like, that felt good. But, uh, not only that, it's so easy to splash into any control deck, because if you play it on the the back side, so obviously the Tibalt side, it's a late game play anyway, and a lot of the control decks were running, Mm -hmm. like, Shambling Ghast, which gives you the treasure, so you can play it. It just does so many broken things, and they finally... They finally made Tibalt good, and that made me happy. I know it was an expensive Planeswalker, but they because it was modal, it kind of made it worth it regardless of what you did. And yeah. so, to me, it was just one of those cards that's just like, ha, I'm going to steal your stuff and be really good, and I love it. So <laughs> that is my number one pick, just because I'm going to miss him. Uh, such a fun card. 
No, man, I love I love breaking the shit out of that card, man. Yeah. We got yeah, especially with like fight rigging and stuff like that. But <laughs> I've I've got a Mardu history lessons deck or reconstruct history deck. You guys, I called it history lessons, but yep. um, that runs no creatures, and he's in it. And uh, I get it. You can't bring him back from the graveyard with reconstruct history, but man, he's top end. And uh, I got to tell you, man, uh, completely off topic from the actual gameplay itself, the Joker style artwork they did on that card. um, Man, it's some of the best artwork I've seen on a Planeswalker ever. I mean, it's great, but yeah, it's so fun, man. Because you're yeah. just like, you know, your opponent. Because I mean, I know how I am when I see freaking Tibble hit. You know, your <laughs> opponent's just gonna sit there going, "Well, shit." Yeah. <laughs> so, so yeah, yeah man. it just feels bad on the opponent's end. Um, oh yeah, yeah. I I just love him. Um, and even if he dies immediately, which does often happen, because it is kind of a must answer card on the Tibalt side at the very least, and he's mm-hmm. easy to answer on the Valky side. Not it must is. answer, but easy to answer. Um. Yeah. He's just one of those cards that even if he doesn't stick around very long, it's just like a nice little F you to the opponent. And I I like that. <laughs> yeah. So no. here we are. <laughs> That's a great card. Look at that. Yeah. Carl Valky ended up on uh, yes. closing out this episode, man. Yeah, no, dude. it's a great card though. It is a great card. And uh, like I said, I still I think it's probably uh, well, it is not even probably. To me personally, that is the Tibble side of that card is my favorite artwork. Yeah. probably in the game right now even over cami war that's impressive <laughs> yeah i mean it's a sick card it's a beautiful little card um yep but yeah all that to say that rounds out our list and part there two of this little podcast series uh that was a blast actually it was I, man it that was a, was a harder fun. list for me there were a lot of cards that i wasn't excited to see go uh yeah so i'm like i said i was more excited about this list because there was a lot of options um mm-hmm. but yeah dude that was awesome i think an honorable mention because i didn't know where we were going to end up on scoot swarm so i had yeah. picked one so for an honorable mention for me uh binding of the old gods man yeah that's a good i'm one. actually gonna miss it it's so many answers yeah so many answers a little bit of ramp uh i didn't really care about it's uh turn three um Death wasn't Death super thing, powerful yeah. but uh it was powerful but not uber powerful right if that it felt you know. fair despite the fact that it was basically a, an answer to anything you know yeah. what i mean yeah um, it was a it lot of fun overpowered. man overpowered it's a lot um, of fun i'm gonna miss a lot of these cards man I'm gonna I miss a lot of them I really am we'll too. have to wait and see what comes out next they better bring Let's some go dominaria. Shit. oh they will don't I'm don't sure. run it's it dominaria. Wizards. don't ruin it oh i it's know dominaria. man they, I know. they have to pull out some some extras for this one um but guys, all that to say, again, if you have some cards that you are very sad to be uh, to to see leave standard, please feel free to share them in the comment sections. We would love, genuinely, would love to actually talk about those and have a conversation about them. Uh, but now we come to the end of the episode, uh, yeah. where we just get to talk about anything unrelated to magic. Do you have any any important stuff, fun stuff, anything like that? Man, I don't know. It's been kind of a slow week, man. I I'll tell you, well, look, man, so, uh, my dad, <laughs> his dad's, his, one, he's turning 82 this year, bro, but he's oh, got man. no couth sometimes. I mean, he's the <laughs> nicest guy in the world, bro, but uh, he called me up the other day because uh, apparently a package is trying to get delivered to the house and he didn't order anything, so yeah. he's wondering what the hell is going on, but uh he called me up and I just answered the phone how I normally do. You know, hey, dad, how's it going? What's sure. new? And I said, what's new? And he goes, uh, I wanted to call about this Amazon package, but I just got done paying for my funeral. <laughs> I was like, dad, what the hell? What the what hell? The fuck? Man? <laughs> man, what the hell, man? It's like, that's one way to open a fucking conversation. Bro. Damn, that's <laughs> Come on, dad. Terrible. <laughs> Ah oh, man, oh he's God. eighty. He'll be eighty-two in November. His yeah. his whole side of the family lives into their nineties. Um, but yeah, man, he's sometimes he just got. I was like, Dad, I don't even don't yeah. talk to me about it. Bro. I was don't like, talk to me let's just me. let's just not open up conversations yeah, that way. All exactly. Right. Damn. But yeah, man. Morbid. Other, 
a little oh, bit. Well, no, it was funny though because yeah, if you know yeah. my dad, it was completely his thing. He comes yeah. out of the blue sometimes with some shit, and you're just gotcha. like, "What is this? Yeah. <laughs> what is this?" That's a good sense so. of humor right there, though. I'm good with that. Yeah. <laughs> He did though, bro. <laughs> like <laughs> that's all I got, man. That's really, good. it's it. It's I, been kind uh, of a boring week. I'm not complaining. My week has been anything but boring. It's been, as you well know, extraordinarily busy between work and trying to get videos done and all that stuff. But um, to keep to keep things positive, <laughs> where uh, I'll mention that. Um, as some of you guys know, if you've been listening or watching or anything, uh, I was out of town last weekend, Saturday through Monday. Um, Caitlin and I were lucky enough to grab a, a last minute Edisto trip. Uh, so we got to go to Edisto Island and uh, hang out there. Got to meet up with some people that are her teacher friends and, you know, all that stuff. And it was a blast. Uh, we absolutely enjoyed it. It's a great weekend getaway. Got to just sit on the beach. Uh, you would hate to know I did get in the water. Um, no, I did not bro. see a shark. Uh, did see dolphins. Saw lots of dolphins. Um, but it was it was <laughs> dolphins beautiful. Dolphins are the serial killers of the ocean. Dolphins dude. are fucking <laughs> disgusting look, things. Yeah, <laughs> like, look it up, man. So yeah. look, I know, I know, I see a lot of stuff on TikTok about it now, and on uh, on on YouTube, people talking about dolphins and their amazement of what they're finding out, dude. I I caught it on like a midnight showing of a Discovery <laughs> TV uh episode like i don't know eight yeah. ten years back and i was like holy f yeah if terrible. ocean was a prison dolphins run it yeah <laughs> so. dude for sure um yeah dolphins if you don't know uh i should mention and you don't know this actually um, okay but this is kind of a funny side story to all of this uh because we're talking about how disgusting dolphins are um yeah. so the guy that started it resolves with me uh, mm -hmm. His name's Will, for anybody that's been here long enough. if you, I've talked about him before. Um, as I've mentioned, he's kind of out of the picture now just because he's got family and he's a little less interested in magic than I think John and I might be. Uh, and so he's kind of out of it, although still very supportive and a great friend and all that stuff. But he is very interested in animals. He grew up on a farm. He's always been really interested in just, like, learning random facts about animals. He loves bugs, and I'm like, you're fucking a weirdo, but great. Um, and so he talked to me about it, because I also do have a lot of interest in, like, just learning random facts about animals and stuff like that. I think it's a really fun endeavor to yeah, just learn things. Yeah. And um, so we talked about starting, and this is the first time I've ever talked about this in front of anybody other than Will. We started about talking, a, or starting... Talked about starting, reverse that, a podcast called Zoo Boys. And what we were going to do is talk about, <laughs> it was going to be a comedy animal podcast. So we were going to, mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, your face says a lot right now. Um, so it was going to be uh, the first episode. We, we had a, a season planned out. And we still might do this just because I think it'd be hilarious. But we, we started with... Um, <laughs> The, the episode title it was going to be a top 10 list. Okay. We're going to go back and forth and talk about these things. Uh, it was going to be called <laughs> Super Schlongs and Amazing Dongs. How Nature Likes to Get It oh On. God, bro. Oh, my God, bro. What? Yes. Uh, oh, so yeah. we were going to count down the most interesting facts about how animals like to, to Dolphins. Do. Dolphins. Tigers. Uh, no. So surprisingly dolphins didn't make the list they're very disgusting but they did not make the list there are some incredible incredible things that you can I'm learn if you start up, looking though. this stuff up i'm not looking that up um, <laughs> yeah you like, shouldn't I mean, um, i'm not man but I mean. uh yeah we had we have a whole season planned out i don't think it's i mean it's not going to happen anytime soon his his daughter is turning one the day that we're recording this and like Ooh. they're yeah, they are swamped, on that new so. parent duty. Well, it's their second. The other one is, oh, I think three and a half, four. Something our like daughter that. turns seventeen. Oh, there you go. Yeah, she's coming on her last her last school year. Oh my god, oh, I just fantastic. said this week was kind of boring. Oh shit, don't she watch, this, watch back. this. Does she? <laughs> don't watch. And the day this comes out, it's my wife's birthday. So, oh, no god. stream tonight, guys. I'll catch oh. you on Tuesday night. We're doing the giveaway on Tuesday night. 
There you go. Um, yeah. Anyway, that's it. Edisto was great. <laughs> so, like, <laughs> man, it went from Edisto to it's fucked up animal facts. Yeah, dude. <laughs> nice. That's, that's nice. how we roll. Anyway, guys, this has nice. been an interesting episode. Um, yeah. And that, that that concludes it. We did it. We yeah. made it through. Yeah. Right We're ready Sweet. for rotation. We Go are. Us. We are. What are we? Yeah, we got to come up with that episode eventually. Yeah, Cards, we do. Uh, we got to do like a top 10. Yeah. Do our do our call outs. Oh, we got to do we got to do a follow up. Yeah. To a uh, new dynasty or not new dynasty, but streets, streets on what our picks were and see how right we were. Yep. That's a good idea. Um, that might yeah. be next week because we there haven't planned that far ahead yet. Um, <laughs> there you go. No, awesome. no, just as we move along and create holes, man, we just put a little spackling on it. So <laughs> we just create stuff as we go. Just cover you. it up. Only <laughs> Nobody will get that. Anyway, nope. guys, we're going to get out of nope. here. It's been a glorious day. Enjoy right. it. Thanks for watching. <laughs> Fucking spackling. Yeah. <laughs>